Wonderful. Oops. We're going to do a scorecard update this morning. I haven't done one this week that was just by itself. The other scorecard update that I recorded, well, I do it every morning, I just didn't record it. Uh, that was tacked onto the weekly feedback reports. So that did get published to YouTube, um, but it is um, unlisted. It's not available to be indexed because when I go through some of the Nurturely Plus accounts, it will, I mean, it shows personally identifiable information, personal, personally identifiable information. So that gets removed by YouTube anyway, and I'm not really the biggest fan on screen sharing people's contact information out into the public. So I will withhold those videos to RCF members only. Um, that way I have a little bit more control over who sees it. Um, but these updates like this, we can keep rolling through like normal and just chatting about their pipelines and seeing what is going on and um, you know where each member lands uh, today and ultimately this week. Um, so this scorecard update, when we go through this, for those of you that don't know, we are simply grabbing the number of sales opportunities, the total number of estimates delivered, and the total number of client wins, how many new clients they've acquired over only the past 90 days. So today's 90 day range is March 29th up till today, June 27th. So over this time period, Custom Aids has enjoyed 298 sales opportunities, 134 estimates delivered, 84 wins. So everything is the same, well, everything except for the first one, we dropped two estimates. This means 91 days ago, there were two leads that came in. So we did not have enough leads over this 90 day period to with or like keep up that intensity and keep up that pace. Dayton is up next. And, and just remaining the same ACQ score, it still means that you're acquiring clients. You're just not increasing your pace. So if Chris stays at 2,600, if Dayton stays at 2,662, there's, that means they're at a pace of about 35, 36 new client wins every 90 days. Um, it doesn't mean that they've stopped winning. It means that they have kept up that pace. So let's see how they've done. I know Chris has been, something feels weird, Friday 29th. Is it 29th? Yeah, I did say that, March 29th. Let's see how they did. We've got 422 leads. 170 estimates delivered and 36 wins. So we go up for there, and I think it was two. Wait a minute. Yeah. 170 and 36. And so once you're with us for a lot longer, specifically after the five and six month period, you now have project rescue leads that become available in your account. And so when we reach out to them, it's like a data, database reactivation campaign. When we reach out to them and say, hey, have you found a reliable house cleaner yet? And they reply whether they're interested or not, that reply generates an opportunity. So Chris has had 422 swings, opportunities over the past 90 days, but a lot of them come from the Project Rescue one. Uh, Orlando is going to be picking up the pace there as well because there's their Project Rescue um, is starting to become more active uh, before, I think, or Reagan, yours didn't show up as opportunities because yours, it wasn't registering the replies. So like you were still getting your wins and estimates delivered, but the opportunities weren't showing there. Really, that doesn't affect anything on your end, though. Uh, it, it minutely affects the conversion rate, but the conversion rate doesn't as heavily affect your ACQ as the, the CAC does, the CAC. So we go on to, all right, Let's see all over in Las Vegas, we've got 
324 leads, 139.28. Okay, okay. So we're, we're, our pace of generating leads has gone down by three over the course of 90 days. No big deal. But that in conjunction with delivering two estimates ratchets up the opportunities to estimates ratio. So it went from 42 to 43, which is not that big of a deal. But when you're talking about bigger numbers like three and 400 sales opportunities, it does matter. Um, so the, the ratio improves there. We're filling up that estimate delivered stage. And ultimately, you're building the hottest pool of sales leads. And over time, you're going to have that that stage is going to be so full. So you're going to have someone every day going through there and calling everyone you've previously delivered an estimate on. It's just this giant system that's got to get moving. And right now, when you're newer, you don't have that full pipeline to enjoy. You're having to feast off of all these new leads, which don't really have the greatest conversion rates right out of the gate. Um, it takes a little bit. So once you're with us for about five or six months, we start reaching out to these project rescue leads. And that's, you know, people have heard from you six months ago. They heard from you now again. They know that you're reliable in the sense of following up. It gives them a vote of confidence to not only get that quote from you, but ultimately sign up with you. So it's the picture is much bigger than than what it looks like here than just these 90 days even. So people like um, or members of Grand Rapids, Indianapolis, Chicago, basically everyone under Orlando has been with us for less than six months, minus Riverside. So you don't have project rescue leads yet. That's okay. We are still able to gain momentum and gain traction uh, for those first five and six months. And then, oh, buddy, it's going to, it, it just opens up another faucet, another lead channel on top of the six or seven, uh, seven that we have already going. Um, we have seven available, but even Chris Dayton doesn't have all seven lead channels opened yet. So it just goes to show that we have longer legs than what's even in here. All right. Orlando Reagan. Let's see how we did. You've been crushing it lately. So this has been one of my most exciting updates each time lately. Two fifty one, seventy three, twenty three. It's going to happen eventually. These are going to start falling off, but we've got to start or keep adding to it every day so that it fills up that ninety day pace. Reagan, you're well within the one k club. This is you've been doing wonderful. So this is a huge turnaround from just a few months ago, and I keep talking about this every time. You were at like 90 or 100 ACQ like in March. This is a massive turnaround. To put it into a better example, you had maybe six or seven wins here. Maybe it was eight. Grand Rapids is doing well because of the number of estimates they deliver as well. So you resembled Grand Rapids more so just a few months ago. So if I were to put their number down to like 35, this is what your pipeline used to look like. Still ACQ positive, but now you have cranked up your estimate deliveries and your wins. You're doing everything we ask and more. You're growing and we're going to get you more leads. I know you can see yourself up here as in the top four and you see, you know, Dayton and Las Vegas with 420 leads, 320 leads and you at 250. A portion of that has to do with your project rescue Automation was not set up properly. So like I said, you had some replies that come through and delivered some estimates to project rescue leads, but it didn't count as the opportunities. That is fixed and it's going to show up there. But I don't want anyone to get too hung up on the number of opportunities here. That's our metric. That's what we need to focus on. So if we're not getting you enough estimates, that is totally on us and we need to get to work there. Reagan, Orlando, that is very obviously the case um for you you've been crushing it we need to kind of take that next level up and increase that intensity of um lead generation for you all right tiffany grand rapids i did not see any um win notifications come through but i'm hopeful for an estimate getting delivered 139 
52 and 8. Oh, okay, okay. So we have a good bit fall off. 139, 52, 8. Okay. Yeah, it's only going to be 20, 24 ACQ points. Uh, the CAC C cost per acquisition wasn't, God, that's really close to a dirty word, isn't affected by estimates delivered. Um, but it's, I don't like seeing the estimates to, delivered go down over the 90 day view just because I don't like seeing ACQ points go out the door. But remembering that it's only a 90 day view and we've got today here, I can send you some more leads and you'll get more of those estimates delivered. Chicago three and Tiara Patterson. You have been hot out of the gate and it's, it's wonderful to see again, need to have that meetup chat with Chris. Really, everyone should be talking to Chris like once a month or every other month um, and just optimizing and closing the feedback loop and hearing some advice or tips on what Chris is doing and what's working well for Gem City Cleaning Crew and really the, the best performing member of this entire program. So it, use Chris as a resource. I, he's not going to break down your door, forcing you to ask him, um, but he will share the farm if you do ask. All right, TR, let's see here. 107, 11 and three. See, I love this here. I know you feel like it's a bit slower and it's not fast because it was a database reactivation campaign, but the first few months are the slowest. So, Keep delivering your estimates. We're going to send some leads into your account right after we get done with this update here. Uh, same with Grand Rapids, Orlando, and the rest of you. Um, follow up with those that you've, you've delivered estimates to. Seattle is launching today. I actually sent them their first lead. Sent Edwin his first lead this morning. Um, just get that going. Again, Edwin, it's going to be a little slower to start, but don't worry. It, it'll pick up speed. I know you're working with Evan Lewis right now too. And he's, I mean, his offering I'm sure is like a, a monthly retainer on top of ad spend. So they're able to just smash Google ads or Google ads, maybe Google ads too, Facebook ads right out of the gate and get you a ton of leads right away. We're not going to do that. We're going to take a much more controlled approach, though I have no doubts that you're going to be able to handle it correctly. We're just doing this because that's the process that we have for every new member. And we fully intend for you to be here for the next decade, unless you sell your company or whatever. So we're going to try to make sure we do this in every right way possible. Get you some traction right away and, and hit the ground running. All right, Erica, still at 11 leads, still at five estimates delivered. I don't know because I feel like you got some leads yesterday. That was two days ago. Yeah, I mean, Erica, keep crushing it. I mean, it's only 11 leads so far, but what can you do? Uh, what I notice, granted, still very, very early, you've delivered five estimates to 11 leads. That's 45%. You're tied with custom aids for first place. All right. I mean, to start an account, we have to see that metric. So you're not going to win them all right away. This is the first metric to fall. You're right there. You're delivering your estimates. Keep going. You're doing great. All right. Same with you. We're going to be looking to see what we can get more leads into your account today. We check all of our spots and deliver what we can um, as well. So here we have Daniel Cook. And RCF Riverside, we are at 69 leads, 22 and 3. All right, well, I can tell that you're not really doing anything. And 
It's June 27th, and I think July 28th will be your last day, Daniel. I don't think you watch these anymore, but I mean, you've been at risk for a while. You know how the program works. Um, you're at risk right now due to that overdue invoice. Another month passes with a negative ACQ score. You're going to get another invoice, another tax. So letting that invoice go overdue again is going to push you to probation. And so if I, I'm not going to get out of here, which I might be able to look right here. Your next ACQ evaluation date, I don't have it on this one, is July 28th. So when that day comes around and you're on probation and you're negative ACQ, there's nowhere for you to go except out. Um, it is what it is. All right, so now we've got Rogan to RCF LAX. We've got 22 leads, eight estimates delivered. Wonderful. And I know that you have – let me check these. I thought you had a few in here that were going to win. Oh, that was Chicago. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of a different account. Okay. So Rogan, I mean, your, your pipeline looks great. So from, I mean, you passed the audit before with hundred percent, but like I'm right back in here, there is no unprocessed leads. You don't even have leads in call attempt one or two. This tells me that you are getting to your folks and you're following up. You haven't had that very many, you haven't had very many leads yet, but you've got a pipeline already of eight. You have, five an estimate delivered, one estimate scheduled, so that will be an estimate delivery, and two that you're you're following up with. Let me let me remind you please that you have a very small pipeline and are already at this point. Let me go back and just get this the, these numbers. It was 22 8 and 1, okay. So you're negative 400 but you're still a good standing, right? Your first 90 days, your first 90 days, you're not penalized for your negative ACQ score. That's because we know that when you start out, it's going to be difficult to achieve that positive ACQ score until you have a fuller pipeline. So there's, we're, we're very lenient. There's much more grace here in the beginning. Rogan, you're handling this perfectly, even though you're second to last on the scorecard. I want you to know that that's not going to stay there forever. I can already tell by how prompt you are to replying to your leads and how regularly you're already following up with those in your pipeline, how organized it is and how you're even speaking to them. I can tell that you're going to enjoy success. It's ju we just got to get through these first few months, build your, help build your pipeline. Thankfully, we're in one of the most populous markets of the country. So LAX is a complete hotbed. And there are many leads out there. We're just getting settled in at this point. So please keep the pedal to the metal. Do not get discouraged. And if you need any help or any motivation for any reason, come back here to the RCF group. Send me a message. We'll gas you up any way we know how. Um, okay, Mount Airy. I actually haven't done that one this week. Let's see. Coming back August 1st-ish. So we'll see when that actually happens though. 63, 12 and two. That's not good. This one, it's like really tough because they're paused but I can't penalize them for it the same way. Yeah, I can take those off because we haven't been running, we haven't done any of these. Google, yeah, that makes way more sense. All right, let's sort here. Each. So 
who moved there actually? <laughs> Riverside. Oh, it's because Granada um, went down a touch. Uh, we're spending money in your market areas, so if we're not getting any wins, but money is going out the door, that's because we are. Uh, or that that will bring the ACQ score down because we're adding to the cost per acquisition. So it happens always in the very beginning, but as soon as you get one win here, for example, like, well, outside of your test win, you're already up to negative 130. So it like, in the very beginning, your wins are huge, huge increases. All right, this average, I am not, I can already tell it went down by one point. It is what it is. Um, it's one red out of all of these here, so I'm okay out of these the, the matrix of 12. Um, this is just a day-to-day -day comparison for the program as a whole, and I watch really just this ACQ metric. If the average is going up here, every, I know the program is doing all right. Now, to look at each of you individually, day-to-day, -day, I will sort this streaks tracker. So Chicago has started a streak. Mount Airy doesn't get one because they're at risk. Las Vegas adds. Dayton adds. Orlando loses theirs, and so does Grand Rapids. The highest streaks we've ever had. Oh, I'm going to do this. Hit color code it. Yeah, I like that. Let's do that. And then this one so it pops out too. I don't know why this stuff just gets me giddy. I love this stuff. Um, Las Vegas and Dayton, I, I mean, you've both gotten up to six days consecutive wins. It's hard because you have to add a win every single day. If you let it go without adding an estimate or a win, it's you're going to lose like five ACQ points per day once you're up that high. So it would take away the streak. So this is incentivizing some positive action every single day. And uh, Las Vegas and Dayton have been crushing it. Beyond that, three days is really tough to break through. Custom made <laughs> can't even get past three. So like it provides a totally different view here. Orlando is close with three, but everyone else, I mean, it, it, it's really tough to keep that streak going. So we'll see how Las Vegas and uh, Dayton keep going with this current one and see if they can break their, their streaks of six. All right. Um, last thing. I know this gets asked quite a bit, so I'm just going to drop it here one more time. This tier column. We've got the ACQ to rank you against each member individually, right? The ACQ makes sure that you're a good member to the RCF, but the tiers will look at everything that you can control, every metric that you have power over and will rank you one to however, whoops, one to however many members are in here. So 12, I need to fix that because that's gonna already bother me. I can tell I didn't add one in here. Wait a minute. Yeah, I do have that. I don't know why it's not giving it to me though. I'll figure it out later. Um, ranks, okay. ACQ, member has control over it. You control how many estimates you deliver, how many wins, your conversion rate, the cost per acquisition. This is the only one that we work together on. So we control cost per acquisition kind of by getting you cheap leads. Not cheap leads. High quality leads that don't cost as much. You control it by winning. So every time you win, you're like slashing it. You're cutting that acquisition cost. So this is the one that we work together on. Ops to estimates, opportunities to estimates ratio, that's you. Estimates to one, that's you. Effort, TTL, all of that. This is all you guys, except, like I said, that cost per acquisition metric. Then we take the average of all of these. What's your rank over every single metric that you can control and then it will group all members into five 
five tiers. One, two, three, four, five. CM Bay City, Dayton, and Las Vegas are tier one members. They are, I mean, see, it's so wild because Orlando is really close. There's such a clear separation. Twos, threes, and fours, there's no fives. So then we go six, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The reason Orlando shows up two here is because we're doing it into equal percentiles and it's trying to force in a, a more equal number of members into each tier. So Reagan, if we were to add like two more members here, you're gonna become tier one just by default. Like you're already there. So I don't have it. Well, it's here on the official scorecard if you come look at the ranks, but not on the public scorecard outside of it. It just has the tiers here. But to see where you really are, go to ranks and then look at this average. So like here I can tell you're 4.6, Reagan. You're not that far from 4.2. So you're even though you're a tier two with Granada, your 4.6 is far, far better than their 6.4. Granada, don't be, don't worry. You're starting, you're just starting out. It's, so I don't mean to pick on or point point anything out here, but just to show that how the tiers kind of rank up, like it's trying to force equal amounts of members into, into each into each group. Um, last thing I am going to mention is the 1K club and possibly 2K club. So I believe with the 1K club, I, I want to start this really as soon as possible, but with a limited team, I, it takes a little bit to implement it all. I know that, okay, let me back up. I believe that if I expect each of you to be acquiring 10 new, 10 new clients a month, you are going to someday run into the bottleneck of needing staff even if that is what you dedicated all your time to. You as the primary member are in the top seat, most likely of your company. So you're doing more than one thing. You're wearing many, many hats. So if you say like you're focusing on building the team, you're still having to do like payroll, make sure your taxes are okay, your, your bookkeeping, license, licensing, insurance, maintenance, repairs, all these other things on top of it. So. I know that one day we're going to also have to provide some serious help in um, the staffing area. If we expect you to take on 10 new clients a month and keep rocking with us forever, we're going to have to help get you some applications. Now, the conversion rates for getting an interview to an employee are far, far, far worse than for client acquisition. If we get you 100 applications, you will probably schedule 45 interviews, 15 of them will say they're gonna show up and four of them actually do. From those four, you maybe get one. That's how it goes. So we know that and knowing that we just say, all right, well, if we want to get four cleaners, we need 200 applications. That's all it is. Everything really in business is a numbers game in terms of growing the company. So we reverse engineer the math. We don't say we need four cleaners. We say we need 200 applications because that's what we can control. We can't ultimately control if someone ends up working with us. We can like we do everything we can to enable it, but we can't force it. What we can do is generate applications and get interviews on the calendar. So once we get members, we've already got them. The one K club is going to be reserved for perks such as that and in, in opening up a source of applications. You've already got things like probably Better Team and Indeed, maybe Craigslist. I don't really know or wherever ZipRecruiter. Um, Gosh, there's another one of those things like that. I can't think of it. Uh, whatever you're doing, keep doing those, but we can also get you leads for applications just like we're doing for estimate requests. And if you're finding success on the client side, you already know how to handle it for staff side, the cleaner's side. The conversion rates will be worse, but we're going like, 
it's okay. We need to have this aspect of the company. We need to have a constant, constant flow of applications in order to have that constant flow of interviews, in order to have that constant flow of, of cleaners who are trialing and a constant flow of cleaners who are becoming long-term with us. It can never, ever, ever be just one-offs whenever you need it. You will never, you will never go to that next leg. You might do well, but your business will fall to the level of your systems. And there's no system there if you're just saying, well, shoot, I need a cleaner. Let me go to Indeed. Let me go to these Facebook groups and put a post there and then send them through the app. No, you have to have the system in place so that you say, here's our page, go apply. The only thing you ever do is do the interviews. Your, your process, the system must handle everything else. And that's what we're going to offer to you so that all you need to do is conduct interviews. It is going to be reserved only, I believe it's going to be the 1K Club. We're not really that close to offering it quite yet, but I wanted to let you all know. This is not going to be something that you pay for. It's going to be something that we're going to give you in addition. It will not affect your ACQ score whatsoever, but if we see that your ACQ is suffering, we're going to pull back on that so that we're not going to kill the profitability in your membership but we want to get you cleaners and we want to basically feed both aspects of your company. If we want you to be number one, if I want you to be number one, I've got to get you a constant source of leads. But if I want you to stay, I can't let you run into the bottleneck. Well, intentionally, willingly let you run into the bottleneck of finding staff. You're, I know that you're going to help us in that area. You're going to help yourself, I should say, in that area. But if we get you more opportunities, that's just going to serve you better. So 1K Club holds a lot of weight in terms of perks or amenities within the program, or it will. This isn't something we're doing right now. So if you are concerned about staffing and you're in the 1K Club, please be patient. We will have, we will have that solution for you. If you're not in the 1K Club, get there. I mean, if you get there, we're going to have no problem investing into helping you the HR side of things, the staffing side of things. You will be successful if you just stick around. But if you continue to hop from marketing agency mark to marketing agency like that to offer to different offers, you're never going to gain traction. You're going to be disappointed. And the reality is each of those agencies, vendors, or whoever you are working with is probably very good at their job. But there is so much power in, in compounding, the compounding effects of building a pipeline bigger and bigger and bigger while adding new ones every day. You're just, you're giving yourself more of an opportunity to win. Whew, that was a good update. Nice 33 minutes. Today is Thursday. It's the last video I'm gonna be doing of this week. Heading north to Michigan tomorrow morning, 11 hour drive north. I'm um, going to be spending two weeks up there. So y'all been doing great. New members doing very well. Seattle, you're launching today. I've got a few more uh, in the pipeline, trying to get them through and get them launched as well. Um, the program is growing. I can feel it and I can really feel uh, those of you that are that have gotten another leg up in the past month or two. It has been very, very exciting to watch. So that being said, have a great week. We'll talk to y'all soon. Bye-bye.